Hi, welcome back. Today we'll practice using a chair with a few variations on some standing poses, some, some back bending, some different things that we can use the chair for. And not all of them, there's, you know, that would take days, um, but just bringing into focus the chair, BKS Iyengar, he is instrumental. He is the instrumental person in bringing this chair into our practice, um, which has gone all around the world. So I'm just mainly focus on some things that are more for beginners to use the chair and just be able to practice in a way that you can feel there's some, some help for you in the practice. So it's either not too hard or it's, you can hold it longer. So the purpose of the chair is to bring a little bit more clarity to your practice and to be able to hold a little bit longer. Okay? So with that said, all of that said, let's start. Before we get started, if you enjoy this video and find it helpful, please give it a like. And if you're new to my channel, subscribe and don't forget to click the bell so that you are notified when the new videos are uploaded. Now let's get started. Have two blocks, have a belt, have a bolster and a blanket and a chair. So just get those things ready. And while you get those things, I'll just get my chair and bring the chair to the mat. So we'll first start in Bharvajasana. And in Bharvajasana, we're going to first sit to the side of the chair. So the the backrest is to my right. Bring my feet towards one another. Knees and thighs are parallel. All right, so from here, just be on your sitting bones. And we're using the chair. This, um, this is a twist, a seated twist that we do on the floor a lot. But as we're beginning, it's good to have that extra support. So we'll use the arms at the back. So one hand is holding, you can see the shoulder is further away. This hand, it's gonna be my pushing hand. This, this shoulder is closer. So I wanna end up turning my body so that my chest is more parallel, or at least moving that direction. So I'm moving from the back body, turning from the back ribs, broadening and opening the chest. And the feet are important. So make sure that the feet are on the floor. And if they're not on the floor, depending on your height of your chair. Everyone's chair is a little bit different. Everyone's tibia bones are different. So if your feet are not quite touching the floor, then just take a couple blocks. I just took one to demonstrate here. I don't need that block, but you can bring your feet onto the chair. So you have that stability. The feet are important to create the stability that you need. When we're seated on the floor, the, the legs, the bottom, Part of the torso is on the floor and it's pressing down. So here you're grounding the feet, sitting evenly on your sitting bones, and then coming and turning toward the chair. So again, holding in my right hand, pressing with my left, inhale, lift up. So creating that intelligence through the spinal column by descending the hips and lifting up through both sides of the trunk. So you're reaching up, up toward the armpit chest. Keep the elbows bent slightly so that you can engage the upper arms into the shoulder girdle. And as you turn, this whole shoulder, arm, upper back will turn. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, turn. So when you're twisting, starting to feel the abdominal area and the front body being present with you as you turn. So as you exhale, inhale up now, exhale, turn. Take a few breaths there. And then again, inhale, lengthen up, exhale, turn. So your chest is turning before your head. So your head is not just turning and your chest is remaining here. Let's do the other side. I'll just change in my seat to go this way. 
So the thigh is parallel to the edge of the, the back of the chair. Feet are on the floor. And sitting in the chair as well as you can, so both sitting bones are on the chair. You want to make sure the chair is flat. The seat of the chair is flat, it's not curved, and it's not soft. It's a, it's a harder surface. So if you don't have a, a yoga chair, which are quite handy to get, you can see there's no bar here. Um, and then the bottom bars are a little bit different. But if you have a kitchen chair or a dining chair, just make sure that the chair is flat and not curved. All right, inhale, place your feet, bring your knees together. Sit equally on your sitting bones. Feel the hands supporting the opening of the chest. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, turn. Keep the shoulders descending. So the shoulders sometimes tend to lift here. If you were in class with me, I would be able to walk around and see what your shoulders are doing. So you don't want to lift the shoulders up, but you want to descend the shoulders down. So you're left lifting from the hips through the side trunk up through the armpit area. And then countering that action, shoulders moving down. So taking a few breaths. After you exhale, take that couple breaths and then inhale again. Exhale. And then release. And then we'll come into the chair, through the chair this time. So stepping into the chair. You can always lean the chair forward to step into it so that you're stable. And bring the chair back. Oftentimes, we'll bring a block between the legs just to stabilize the legs. I don't know if you noticed, but maybe one knee went forward and one knee went back. You want to keep the pelvis level as much as you can. So that block helps you to see what's happening in the legs. All right, now take your arm onto the chair rail, holding onto the chair rail, extend your other arm back. So as you do this, you're going to start to twist. You start to turn the front chest. You start to turn the abdomen. So be aware what's happening in the back body as well as the front body. Hand on the front of the chair seat. Press this arm down. Now this is the shoulder that sometimes lifts up, depending if you're a really big person, tall or long arms, just bring your hand down a little bit further so that that shoulder is not lifting up. Inhale, lift it up, exhale, turn. And this backhand, since we've already done one twist, you might be a little bit more open. You can take the backhand back a little bit and you can even reach and hold that sidebar. And when you're holding that, you can move that shoulder back moving that right shoulder blade into the body, right shoulder back. Always your movement is on an inhalation or an exhalation. So you're lengthening up, moving upward with your inhalation, exhaling your turning. Remember the head just doesn't get thrown back. Start, keep turning the chest so that there's no strain. If you have any strain in your neck, just look forward or just look back on your other shoulder and then release. Readjust so that you feel you're sitting evenly. Take the other hand back. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, turn. So reaching that hand back just a little bit at first to see how that side of the body feels. Oftentimes, one side is not the same as the other. You know, you might have had an injury on one side, you're still recovering or protecting it, or you just have not used, used it so much. So just be aware of what's happening in your body and adjust accordingly, all right? So now, if you feel open enough and you want to take that hand back, hold on to the rail. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, turn. So now I'm drawing that left shoulder back toward the wall, and the left shoulder blade is moving forward toward the chest. So I'm fixing the shoulder blade flat against the back, which opens this whole front chest here, collarbones. And then just feeling that twisting again coming through the abdomen and the chest. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, turn. 
Take a few breaths there. And release. Okay, so now take the block out. You'll step out of the chair carefully. All right, you can lean it forward, come out. And now you're going to take the chair. Whoops, <laughs> don't trip. You can just take the blanket there and then come forward. So we'll come forward with the elbows on the chair and rest your head. Coming into Ardha Uttanasana, feet are hips width apart. So we've done some twisting now. Now we're gonna lengthen through both sides equally. So feet grounded, lifting up through the knees, move the hips back and lengthen through the side trunk. Let your head release. So you can also extend the arms, pressing the hands down. You want to get a little bit more opening there. The armpit area, inner arm, and reach the arms forward. If your head is not on the chair and you want to have your head supported, just walk forward a little bit so that the forearms are on the chair, the head's on the chair. Keep the thighs moving back. And then coming up, you can take the blanket away. Move the chair back a little bit. And we're gonna come into Adho Mukha Svanasana. So you can come down onto the floor and move the chair just toward the end of your mat. Take your hands around the bottom of the chair, and then lift up through the hips. So pressing the hands, turn the hand, so you're, you're more at the webbing between the thumb and the index finger. And now that makes my arms rotate. So collarbones are wide and inner arm is turning, inner shoulder is turning. So it helps you to get a little bit more space there, especially for those of you that are tight in the shoulders. Press the index finger down, press the hands against the chair leg. Now come onto the toes, lift the hips up. So you wanna get maximum length from the hands to that armpit area, side trunk, lifting up into the hips. Kneecaps are lifted, thighs moving back, and now start to roll over the mounds of the toes. So not just dropping the hips, but keep the hips lifted, keep the length that you got from the arms and the side trunk, and move the heels down toward the floor. And then come up. And now you can do downward dog on the chair as well. For those of you that that was a little bit too much, just bring your feet further back and now lengthen the arms. Take your hands on the side of the chair, get that same rotation. So you have hold of the side of the chair, so chair is not slipping, and you're lengthening the arms. Stretch out through the fingers. And then come forward. All right, so now we're going to practice Yutita Hasta Parangustasana. Okay, so you'll turn the chair seat toward the end of your mat and have your belt. We're gonna use the wall, so you'll have the wall as support. It is a balancing pose. And you can bring, if you have another mat, you can bring the mat onto the back of the chair. So you have the chair, you can either have a mat on the chair or a blanket on the chair because your heel will go here. All right, so just something so your, your heel is comfortable, but it's not gonna slide. So with the blanket, you just wanna make sure you're not sliding off. So you come to the wall, and first stand in Tadasana, so you feel balanced on both feet. So balance through the left foot, the right foot, the left leg, the right leg, the pelvis, and up through the chest and the shoulders. You can feel the shoulders at the wall, the hips at the wall, you can feel both hips at the wall. So just notice that. One is not forward, 
one is not back. So just be aware of that right now because I'm going to bring your attention back to that. So now standing on that left foot, raise the right leg up. And you want to be right on the heel, not so much the tendon, the Achilles tendon. So I'm going to move this chair a little bit forward just to get it into that place. So now I'm on the heel. Now, if you haven't practiced this before, it may be better for you to put the mat there so you don't slide. All right, so you're not pushing the foot forward. This leg, even though it's lifted, it's, I just pushed it forward and you could see, and this hip came away from the wall. So the direction is to bring the leg up, but the hip is moving back toward the wall. So this is how we'll use the wall. This is how we'll use the chair to just check our alignment. And then you can bring the strap onto the ball of the foot. Now, standing tall on this leg, so you're not letting that hip sink out, but you're gripping with the outer thigh, almost like there were pinchers there. So that's pinching that in, and the buttocks is firm. And that, that action of bringing the thigh in brings that firmness to the upper leg. And then, now just observe your other hip at the wall. So feeling that hip at the wall, you're drawing up through the kneecap, you're drawing the femur bone back into the hip socket. So we're always wanting to maintain that integrity of the joints by using the muscles around the joint. And then here, with your hands, pull back to the shoulders so that the arms, even though the arms are moving forward, we want to keep the, the direction of the arm moving back toward the wall. And as you do that, you'll feel your shoulder blades. Move your shoulder blades toward the chest so they come into more of a flat position. Okay, keep your toes spread and wide. And now in this position, if you feel that you can balance, so first, Come back to your standing foot, your standing leg, and then you can <clears throat> release that strap and bring the arms up. As you bring the arms up, reach up and drop this hip. So keep the hip dropping and drawing back toward the wall. Reach the arms up. Breathe. Smiling, happy to be alive, to be able to stand on one leg. Reach up. And now, if you don't have your balance, no problem. You can stay with the strap, so no, no reason to come with the arms up unless you feel ready. So the other thing about the hips, the outer hips are moving in. So there's that firmness, there's that compactness, which helps to get that length through the spine. Okay, so now you're gonna carefully take the leg down, stand back in Tadasana. Come back to that awareness of both hips at the wall, shoulders at the wall, standing tall from the feet, moving down, lift up through the legs. So keeping that connection, lift your other leg up. So placing it on the heel and dropping this hip. So the tendency is to lift the leg and lift the hip. Drop the hip down. And then as you draw the kneecap up, move the femur bone back. So it really starts from the foot. So you're activating the toes, drawing the toes back towards you, which then gives a cue to your knees. So draw the kneecaps up, move that femur bone in, and then you can take your strap on the, on the ball of the foot. And that direction of moving your shoulders back. So just pull the hands down the strap, move the shoulders back, shoulder blades moving in. Now come back to the foot. So you're grounded on all four corners of the foot. Just feel that, the ball of the big toe, little toe side, inner heel, outer heel. Press down strongly and lift up through that leg, keeping those compact hips. Notice your hips. Which hip is coming away from the wall? Are they both at the wall? Standing tall. Just be aware of your breath, breathe. Now knowing that you're gonna to try to bring your hands up. So keeping that stability, standing on that foot, lifting up through the leg, descending the outer leg, reach the arms up, reaching up. Create that extension, open through the armpit area, dropping the hip, feeling both hips at the wall, 
You can press your thumbs into the wall and now move the, move the sacrum away from the wall. Move the lower back away from the wall. You can still feel the buttocks at the wall, but move your lower back away. Breathing. Reach up through the fingertips. And then bring the arms down. Coming back to stabilize yourself. And then take the strap away. Bring your leg back down. And you can just bring the strap over to the side. We're not going to use that right now. You're going to take that blanket right at the top of the chair and press it into the tops of your thighs so that you can come forward. Now, I'm leaning the chair so the chair legs are lifted. And I'm bringing my head down onto the chair with the arms on the chair. So that causes me to lean back a little bit. So if you're tall, you can do that. But if you, if you can just bring the tops of the thighs right to the top of the chair. I'm on my toes now. So it all depends on your chair, it depends on your height. So you can play around with this. You can bring your head down and then extend your arms down. You can also bring your arms onto the chair and release your head down. And so when you're doing this, the abdomen is spreading and the abdominal organs and the muscles are moving back towards your lower back. So you get a nice sensation in the lower back. If when you're going over the chair, if it's too high for you, of course, you can always use blocks to build yourself up. Okay, and it, if you're tall, very tall, you can put blocks under the chair legs, which will then raise the chair up so that you'll have more, you'll, you'll be more able to lengthen because you have, if you have long legs, long torso, you're gonna need the chair a bit higher. All right, and then coming up. And then come down off the blocks, if you were using the blocks. And move the blocks to the side. All right, we're gonna practice one standing pose, which is Pavrita Trikonasana. All right, you don't need the blanket for this, but let's, let's have a block in case you need it. All right, so standing in front of the chair, you bring the left leg forward, right leg back. And you'll come forward, like in Parvottanasana. Like we were in Uttita Hasa Padangastasana with the legs on the chair, that the outer hips move in towards one another. All right, and now you're going to come forward Adjust your chair so that you can feel that you can support yourself with the bottom hand. So this is a little bit of a twist, yes? So top hand on that bar, bottom hand on the bar, compact the hips, and then turn the chest. So like we did in the twist earlier, we are turning toward the chair bar. So here you can feel the chest turning. And then release. Step forward, watch your space, not falling over. Okay, we'll do the other side. So stepping back. So the legs are like scissors. If you envision a scissors, they're bolted together right at the center and the blades just go back and forth. So the, the blades aren't bending and this pelvis, so say this is your pelvis here, the pelvis is keeping you so that the legs can lengthen and the trunk can go forward, okay? So you're coming down, lengthening, just adjust yourself so you feel balanced, and then you'll take one arm over the chair, have it far forward enough so that you, your hand will be in the right position, and then Press your hand down. 
You can take your hand on the chair leg as well and use the other arm to help you start to turn. So you can feel the inner thighs are coming closer towards one another. Just let the whole back broaden. The lower ribs moving down toward the floor. And then release and come up. Turn your feet. So the way I came out of it last time is a little bit wobbly, so better to turn your feet, walk your feet together so that you're not falling. Okay, so now the chair we're going to take to the wall. And we'll sit. So we're using the chair now for Peripuna Navasana. So in Peripuna Navasana, we're wanting to keep the lift and the engagement of the back body. So the back ribs are moving forward. Chest is lifting. You'll be balancing on your sitting bones. So we'll use this chair for your calves. The legs will come up. And the fingers will be moving towards your hips. If you need a little bit of extra support, you can have your hands on blocks as well. But if you don't need that, just take your fingers on the floor. And now move the chest forward. So remember your twisting that you did, how you twisted from one side and then the other side. Move both sides the, of the back ribs forward and extend up through the legs. So you can see the, the knees are lifted, thighs are parallel to one another. You can bend your elbows and try and get that little bit more of that scooping action. So your shoulder blades are moving in, chest is lifting. And then we'll come a little bit closer. Raise your legs up a little bit higher. Walk your hands in. And then press your hands, lift your chest, and extend the legs up. Pressing the hands, move the shoulders down. And then release. As long as we're here, you can bring one leg onto the chair. Just do a little bit of a hip opening here. So bending the knee, bring the leg onto the chair. Just allow that leg to turn out to the side. And then bring the other leg down and bring it up. So you're bending, trying to hook the front of the foot or the ankle and coming in. So you're deepening the bend of that leg right at the hip socket. And then release. And come into Upavista Kanasana. So in Upavista, the legs are wide. You can bring your arms up, up the chair, extend forward. So I want to keep descending the hips, descending the buttocks, keep the thighs down, outer hips down. And as I do that, I'm lifting up, lifting the chest, coming with the chest closer to that front of the chair as I walk my hands up. Sometimes the calves get stuck. So if you have a really um, muscular calf, just release your calves so that doesn't keep you from lengthening. Lifting up. And then you can bring your arms onto the chair and bring your forehead onto the arms. Just staying there. Keeping the action in the legs. The toes are spread. The toes are moving back. Be on the heel. Moving the thighs down. And then come up. Show you one more. Using the chair, 
in a seated position. So you can come into Baddha Konasana. So in Baddha Konasana, you can take a little bit of height if you need it. So blanket is no problem. Maybe take it, fold it lengthwise so it's narrower, and then sit on the blanket. And bring your, your legs to the side. So you come to Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet, Moving in, and again, got your shoulders at the wall. You can feel that balance of the left and the right shoulder, lengthening the inner leg, drawing back. So first, we'll just stay here at the wall. We'll keep the chair there because we'll go forward as well. But just be here. You can close your eyes a little bit, and, or just for a few minutes, just to lengthen. Just breathe into that with your hands on the thighs, not at your knees. Let your hands roll the outer thigh down toward the floor. So you can feel that space coming in the front groin. Open your eyes, just see where your hands are. You don't want to have your hands on your knees. Hands here, roll the, roll the thighs. And now, from there, you're going to have your chair so that you can start to lengthen forward. You can walk the arms forward like you did in Upavista, reaching the arms forward. Keep the hips grounded, thighs descending, reaching forward. And depending on how far you can go, you can stop at any point and just bring your, fold your arms and bring your head down, resting your head on the forearms. And then lift your head and straighten the legs. Come back to Dandasana. And here we'll go forward with the, with the chair. So first, coming forward, concave the back. Moving the shoulder blades forward. You can walk your hands up the chair. Press the feet into the chair. If the feet are touching the chair, then that's a good opportunity to get the feet grounded. Lift up through the arms, reaching, and then finally, just bring your head down. As you bring your head down, just be reminded that the thighs are moving down, inner thighs moving down. Kneecaps remain lifted so that you have that action of the legs descending. You have that direction moving downward. And then inhale, come up. And we'll take the chair to the side. Just be in Dandasana and bring your arms up, Urdhva Hastasana, reach up. Interlace your fingers, press your hands out, and lift. Feel your shoulders at the wall, bring the shoulder blades down, tops of the shoulders down, shoulder blades down. Breathe. Reaching up through the wrists, reaching up through the hands, stretching the fingers, and exhale, come down. All right, from Dandasana, now we'll stand up. We're gonna use the chair and a bolster. So get that ready. You're gonna turn your chair. You could bring your chair toward the wall. So you can use your legs supported on the wall. We use the bolster. You don't need your strap. And ideally, I like to have something on the seat. I prefer to have a mat, but some of you don't have an extra mat, so I'm going to show here with the blanket. I'm going to sit into the chair and bring the legs over the chair. So you want to have some space there 
so that there's enough room to bring your legs over. Okay, so you'll bring your feet up onto the wall, take your legs over. So you can see, I don't have much space here. I'm going to bring a little bit more space. So just don't be afraid to adjust. When you find that you've not given yourself enough space, you're not quite sure. So now I've got my legs over the, the back of the chair. And I'm completely stable because I'm weighted on this side. I'm also weighted over here. So now I'm going to start to slide my hips toward that end, bring my hands onto the chair legs, which is important. And now with the elbows bent, I can feel the bolster. Okay, so I know something's behind me. For those of you that have done this a lot, you know how it was when you were first beginning. You feel a little bit like you're in free fall. So now I've got one leg around that chair, back, which is holding me, and now I'm starting to slide down a little bit till I feel, okay, now I've got my shoulders there. Good. My back doesn't feel so great, so I'm going to bring my feet to the back of the chair, and now I've released my lower back so that I feel the lower back is on the bone of the pelvis. And before you go too far, just make sure you take your hands underneath the chair rail so you're holding onto the chair rail so you're not sliding off the bolster. Okay, if you've already slid off the bolster, start again. No problem. Now roll the shoulders under. Remember when we were doing that twisting, how we tucked our shoulder and turned it back. So broaden your collarbones, pressing the shoulders down, pressing the arms. You can feel them on the bar. If you're quite broad or wide, big guy, you can always take your hands on the outside of the chair. But just make sure that you're holding onto the chair. That will keep you lifted and prevent you from sliding. Okay, from here, you can stretch your legs out. And now I'm a little far away from the wall to have my feet at the wall. That's okay, you don't need them there. My calves are at the back of the chair. Activate the legs, kneecaps are lifted, thighs are parallel to one another. So I keep the action through the legs that I had in the standing poses. And just breathe. So my neck is very comfortable. It's resting on the bolster. And then just the back of my head is touching the mat. I'm holding the, the chair. And with that holding of the chair, I draw my arms back towards the shoulders and lift my chest more. So much like when we were standing doing Uttita Hasta Parangustasana with the leg raised on the chair rail, we were pulling the arms back toward the wall. So here you're pulling from the fingers back toward the shoulders so that you feel the, the lift of the chest. And just be there. It's a really wonderful pose. You're in an inversion. Your heart is higher than your head. The blood is able to move with gravity down into the throat, into the different areas of the throat, the tissue, the fascia, into the brain. And it's a relief for the heart. So the heart is not having to pump up, but the blood is flowing with gravity. You can also take your legs into um, Baddha Kanasana, like we did at the wall earlier, with the knees apart. And if you at any point don't feel comfortable in your lower back, come down a little bit further until you do, because it's very comfortable when you have the bones of the back pelvis on the chair, it's very comfortable, but you just have to get it to the right place. Just bring your attention to your breath. Relax your breath. So we've had a, quite a bit of 
illness with the virus that's been around the world. So inversions are, are really a wonderful tool for you to be able to, if you have a flu, not so much the virus, but inversions are great. If, you have the, if you've been sick, you just have to see what, what is working for your body, but generally for the immune system, which I'll post later, there's this whole sequence for that, but it's all done with quite a few inversions. So this is good. Seasons are changing now, and you might come down with just a, a regular cold or a flu. This is good to do. If you have a lot of stress, it's good to quiet the mind. So we'll come out now. You can bring your knees towards one another. Take your arms out from underneath, but still hold on to the rail, hold on to the legs. We're going to slide down, and we'll do it by bringing the feet onto the chair, or you can bring the feet onto the side rails of the chair, and lift your shoulders up. So instead of tucking them under, you're lifting them up more, because you want to start to slide down the chair. The blanket helps when you want to slide, because it doesn't prevent you like a sticky mat. And then end up with your hips on that bolster, and just let your legs relax on the chair. So stay like this for a few breaths. We'll take Shavasana with the legs in the chair. If you are comfortable in this position and you slid down where your hips are here, um, you can stay in that position. If you've already come down, you slid down and the bolster is under your shoulders and it's not really supporting you, then you can take the bolster away and just bring it to the side. And now, even the people that were comfortable, if you want to bring your hips onto the floor, you can bring the hips on the floor. And I've got my legs on the chair. So my legs fit perfect on this chair, the length of my femur bones and the up to the knees and the calves are completely supported. If you're taller, you, your legs are longer, which mine aren't, but let's say they were, then this would be more of a support. If you're small and your legs don't quite go up to that chair, then you can continue to have the bolster underneath. Just bring it underneath so it's under your hips. Okay, so that's how you adjust because all chairs are a little bit different, chair heights, your legs are different. So you want to have your legs completely supported, let the femur bones move down, let the lower back broaden. And again, the abdomen is moving down softly. So there's a soft quality that comes to the abdomen and the tissue and the internal organs spreading out supporting the whole back from the left side to the right side. And just let your arms relax, shoulders relax down. And then just, again, bring your attention to your breath. If anyone was tight in the shoulders, if you have a little pillow or a blanket you can put behind your head, you want to have the back of the head so that <coughs> the chin is slightly coming toward the chest. So not lifting the chin up. If your shoulders are tight and the chin is lifting, take a little support under your head. Let's relax the arms, relax the legs. And as you exhale, feeling the abdominal area release toward the back, feeling the back body Soften, spread. So feeling that with each breath. Notice the sensations you're feeling through the trunk, through the arms, through the legs. And 
You're just feeling where you're placed on the floor and on the chair, just allowing that skin to soften and feel that the bones are heavy, so the bones are weighting you down. So that a lightness comes, a softness comes. Feeling where you are in the back of the head. Forehead soft and wide. Let your front brain descend down towards your back brain. Feeling your inhalation. Let that be the cue to soften your face, your cheekbones, your jaw. Softening with each breath. So I'm just going to allow you to stay in Shavasana, stay in this position. It's a really restorative position, something you can take any time. So stay in Shavasana, you're in your own home. Staying as long as you like, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something. If you'd like to go a little bit further, visit the uh, video for back, and I do a class on neck and shoulders. So all of that is relevant to what we just did now. So happy practicing. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them, and I'll get back to you. Take care.